I left off taking you to first John chapter three. Go there. First John chapter three. The word of God says in first John chapter three in verse number five. He says. And, you know, I was talking about this in the context of the devil maybe trying to trick Jesus, uh, you know, leaning upon his compassion and think he's going to do things outside of the will and purposes and the timing of God. Maybe maybe he thought he would trick him to do this. But look at this. It says here in this. And you know that he was manifested. Manifested means made means me uh, means made known. To take away our sins and in him is no sin, no sin. Jesus knew why he was here. He came to take away our sins, but he came for another reason. Look at verse number eight. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, did you hear that? For this purpose, the Son of God was made known. That's what manifested means. That he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. Do you not know the more you meditate? Oh, Jesus, I feel the excitement of the word of God right now. The more you meditate in the word of God, he will destroy the devil's control over you. Jesus, he'll 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 destroy his lock on your mind. He'll 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 even work in the subconsciousness of your thoughts. Hallelujah. See, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. They're not natural. But they're mighty. They're mighty through God. He pulls down these strongholds. He casts down every imagination, every element of reasoning. Ah, It makes them obedient to the purposes and the plans of God. The word of God is just that powerful. The word of God is efficacious. It has the power to produce the design effect. You simply need the word of God. It's like, as Isaiah says, it's like the rain that comes down from the heavens and does not go back. But it waters the earth so that the earth will bring forth bud for the grower and food for the grower and meat for the eater. So is my word that floweth out of my mouth. It shall now return unto me. Void, meaning it won't return empty handed, but it will accomplish the purpose wherewith God sent it. God will deliver you through his word. And that's why it's the sword of the spirit. That's why it will cut. It will cut to the quick and to the core those things that inhibit you from flowing in the power and the purposes of God. You need the word of God. Meditate in it day and night. Yes, that's why he told. Do you not know that's what he told Joshua? He told Joshua right after his, his, his mentor Moses was dead. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now you go. The, the only way he could enter into the promised land and take it, he had to use the word of God. He said, this book of the law, the book of the law is the word of God. The word of God shall not depart from your mouth. Uh, I wish I had more time. <laughs> I want to deal with that. But thou shalt meditate in it day and night so that you would be able to observe all that's within it. And then he told Joshua, and then you will find uh, your way to be prosperous. And then you will find good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. Be not dismayed, for the Lord thy God shall be with you Wherever you go, I don't care where you go with your mask on. Yes, with your mask on. If you're in the midst of people, don't be naive. Do what the authorities are asking you to do. But at the same time, trust in the final authority. And the final authority is the mighty word of God. I wish you'd say amen to me. Hallelujah. Now, let me just give you one last thing before I close out. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, uh, the devil wants you to bow down. See, see, after Jesus dealt with him with the word of God, we found out his real intent. His real motivation was to get you to bow down. See, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to bow down to your your weaknesses of your flesh. He wants you to bow down 
I, I remember many years ago, many years ago, I was young in the Lord. I didn't understand the words of God. He was just working with me. And I was a young man at that time. And a friend of mine and I were talking and and uh, we asked the question of each other. Do you really think that God can give us the strength to overcome uh, our sexual desires? Because at the church that I was in, they were basically saying nobody's perfect. And that, I mean, you know, a man has needs. A woman has needs. And, you know, God is a God of grace. And, and I wasn't stupid. I didn't know enough of the word of God, but I knew what that meant, that, that we were acquiescing to the propensities of the flesh because, quite frankly, uh, what's a brother supposed to do? You know, you got needs. But then somebody came to me right at that point of acquiescing. When I uh, thought that I had to live that kind of way, somebody came to me and said, no, son, you can, you can live according to the word of God uh, the, 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 he who is born of God, he took me to a scripture, does not practice sin because the seed of God remains in him and he can't continue to practice sin because he's born of God. Now, that does not make you perfect, the man said, because you may slip from time to time, but you won't be comfortable in it. You won't be able to stay in it because God's power is now in you. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Do you not know the God in you is greater than the world in you? The power of God is in you now. And if the power of God is not in you, you need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit.